6 of the Trump administration. The president has tonight returned from Florida to what is very much a White House on crisis footing. Multiple controversies now engulf this administration as the Russia investigation itself intensifies. Last week ended with special counsel Robert Mueller, of course, indicting 13 Russians on charges. They interfered in our election, but didn't accuse the president or anyone in his circle of actual or active wrongdoing. The president latched on to that part of it and was initially pleased with the news, but then he spent the weekend at Mar-a-Lago in Florida, and he watched the news coverage. Before unleashing his anger in response to that indictment, 14 tweets just about Russia in just over 48 hours. Here's some of what the president wrote in this fusillade, quote, if it was the goal of Russia to create discord, disruption, and chaos within the U.S. then, with all the committee hearings, investigations, and party hatred, they have succeeded beyond their wildest dreams. They are laughing their asses off in Moscow. Get smart, America. Quote, very sad that the FBI missed all of the many signals sent out by the Florida school shooter. This is not acceptable. They are spending too much time trying to prove Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. There is no collusion. Get back to the basics and make us all proud. Then there was this. Obama was president up to and beyond the 2016 election. So why didn't he do something about Russian meddling? The president even criticized his own national security advisor, General H.R. McMaster, for calling evidence of Russian election interference, quote, incontrovertible. As Bloomberg's own Shannon Pettypiece, who joins us in a moment, noted, Trump criticized everyone but Russia for election meddling. As we mentioned, Russia is not the only issue confronting this White House. There are lingering questions about allegations of abuse against a top-level aide, reports of cabinet aides billing taxpayers for luxury travel, allegations of extramarital affairs with the president, for starters. Ashley Parker and Philip Rucker report in the Washington Post, Trump officials have felt under siege. They write that one official described the nation's focus on the issues raised by the school shooting in Florida as, quote, a distraction or a reprieve. A lot of people here felt like it was a reprieve from seven or eight days of just getting pummeled. The Washington Post's Philip Rucker described it this way on this network earlier today. They had been under the bright lights of the media spotlight for these numerous scandals, which were growing uh, in the days leading up to the shooting. And all of a sudden, the, the media attention turned to Florida. People stopped asking questions. They got a few days to sort of collect their thoughts, figure out what they're going to do, reset, if you will. But I don't think these scandals are gone. I think Tuesday they're going to be faced with a lot of questions about all of this. Let's bring in our leadoff panel on this holiday Monday night. New York Times Washington correspondent Michael Schmidt, the aforementioned Shannon Pettypiece, White House correspondent for Bloomberg, and MSNBC political analyst Eli Stokels. Good evening and welcome to you all. Shannon, first of all, the perils of positive spin, telling the boss, no, this is, this is a good news story for you. He goes down to Florida where he sees the contrary flipping around on the cable channels. He comes back to Washington tonight. Uh, back on Twitter, he promoted the U.S. economy, he promoted a book, and he promoted the Senate candidacy of one Mitt Romney. Yeah, uh, and uh, we haven't even started the week yet, really. I mean, today was <laughs> technically a holiday. So um, Tuesday, when the gates of that White House open, we have a lot of pent-up questions because we have heard very little, uh, very few opportunities to ask uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders any questions, uh, no opportunities to ask the president any questions. He did not have any uh, media availability, really, over the weekend. Of course, they were trying to have him keep a low profile over the weekend out of respect for for the shooting victims who were just 40 minutes away, who he went and visited with on Friday night, trying to keep the somber tone by keeping him off the golf course. But I don't know from a public relations standpoint which would have been better, having him golfing or having him tweet, as you pointed out, repeatedly over and over again throughout Saturday and Sunday, and in one case, 
uh, blaming the FBI's Russia investigation for this shooting falling through the cracks. So it was just an, another weekend that could have been low profile. It could have taken the temperature down, uh, but it didn't because of the constant barrage of tweets we've seen and that continue going late into the night tonight. Uh, Michael, if memory serves, you were with a guest of uh, you were a guest of a member of Mar-a-Lago when the president. You kind of ran into him uh, after he had come off the golf course, uh, received an impromptu interview with the president, during which he mentioned no collusion a number of times. You can fill in the number. Have you found his usage remaining static, or was this weekend frenetic even by his standards? Well, the interesting thing about when I spoke with the president back in December was that I hadn't actually asked about collusion, but he had jumped to it on his own. This was something that he really wanted to say. The president sees himself as his best spokesman, and you sort of saw that again this weekend, where he took to Twitter to try and turn the narrative in terms of Russia back towards his favor. It's our understanding that the president initially saw the indictments that came out on Friday as a good thing for him. There was no evidence of any collusion in there. There was nothing that referenced his campaign. It was all, you know, Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, went as far to point out this at his press conference. But as the weekend wore on, the president saw that the narrative wasn't heading that way, that the narrative was that there was Russian meddling in the election. This was something that had helped the president get elected. And he went full force to do everything he could through his favorite medium, Twitter, to make that argument. And I think that's why we saw what we did. Eli, is there any magic for him to be back in the White House? Or does it just mean when we see a calming in his Twitter feed that he is back in the uh, uh, area of dominant influence of a chief of staff and perhaps a lawyer or two? I, I don't even know if it means that. It just means that he's gotten a lot of things off his chest over the weekend and, and will go quiet for a short period. Uh, but I think Michael's use of the term narrative is really important here because that is something that consumes this president. He is the principal actor in this administration. He is the president, and yet he is consumed by the reflected reality that he uh, consumes that comes back to him from TV that he watches constantly. He was tweeting about 60 Minutes interviews last night. Seemed like he spent most of the weekend watching Twitter or watching television, being on Twitter and making phone calls uh, to people that he trusts outside. And the reality that is reflected back to him is what he acts on. Uh, he gets agitated when people stop believing that John Kelly is a calming force in the White House. That's what bothers him about the Rob Porter saga. And with the information that came down about the Russian indictments, as, as Maggie Haberman in the New York Times reported, you know, initially it wasn't, it, he didn't believe, he didn't hold on to what his own advisors told him uh, when he saw it on television uh, being portrayed differently, it ate at him. I mean, this is a guy whose own lawyers have tried to allay his anxieties by telling him, hey, this investigation is going to be over by Thanksgiving, oh, by Christmas, oh, by the end of the year. I mean, this is a guy who, who the people around him are constantly trying to soothe and keep uh, from these sort of freakouts. Uh